two weeks ago, Pine64 announced this, the PinePhone Pro. This isn't actually a PinePhone Pro, but the design is almost the same. We'll get to that later. Yes, I am late to the party, but because I was late to the party, I was able to round up a bunch of extra information that came out about the phone after its announcement. So let's get into it. Yes, this video was delayed because I did the community update video for Pine64. Then the day before the announcement of the PinePhone Pro, I had a PSAT, so I didn't have time to make the video the day before the PinePhone Pro got announced. Then I got sick for a week, and I obviously can't record when I'm sick. And then I had to do a bunch of homework and classwork to make up being sick for a week. But I'm back now, so let's start with some basic information that you probably already know from reading the community update. So we'll just speed run through it real quick. The PinePhone Pro is a new phone made by Pine64 that will run a variety of mobile Linux based distributions. And it uses a new CPU or SOC, whatever you want to call it, called the RK3399S which is based on the RK3399 seen in devices like the PinePhone Pro and the Rock Pro 64 single board computer. It is fully software compatible with the RK3399, which means that already has very good mainline Linux support, but in order to make sure the battery life and cooling is not dog water, it will be around 20% slower than the PinePhone Pro. Some other things to mention is that the design is almost identical to the original PinePhone, although the PinePhone Pro is slightly thicker, but probably not thick enough to notice unless you had both a PinePhone Pro and a regular PinePhone side by side. And there will be improved build quality thanks to a Gorilla Glass 4 screen and a matte black back that should be more fingerprint resistant. Other than that though, the design is almost the same in order to keep compatibility with the new accessories for the original PinePhone, such as the keyboard case. Another thing is the camera is going to be improved significantly thanks to a 13 megapixel Sony sensor that already has good mainline Linux support. In comparison, the iPhone 13 has a 12 megapixel sensor for its main rear camera, although this is not an apples to apples comparison, mainly because it's actually a Pine64 to apples comparison. See what I did there? I'm, I'm hilarious. However, the iPhone's camera will take better photos despite being a slightly smaller resolution, mainly because its aperture is bigger, it has an entire company of engineers to write photo processing software, and the fact that it doesn't have just one rear camera, it has like three now, I think. It might be four, I can't remember off the top of my head. So yeah, the iPhone will still take better photos, but the lens for the camera is actually comparable to a flagship phone, like an iPhone, which is very impressive for a mainline Linux phone that's only $400. So the quality of the photos will mostly be dictated on the quality of the software for processing the photos. So once software support is ready, it should be able to take some pretty banging photos. Another thing of note is that the front camera of the PinePhone Pro is going to be the same as the rear camera of the original PinePhone, which means that the front camera will actually be usable, and instead of looking like this, it will look like this. Lastly, just because I couldn't really fit this in the script, I just want to quickly mention that it now has 4 gigs of RAM instead of 2 or 3, and 128 gigs of storage instead of 16 or 32. And this storage should be a lot faster than the current PinePhone storage, so this storage will make apps load faster. Epic. Now that we got the information out of the way that you probably already know, let's start with some extra information that you probably don't know yet. Let's start with the Reddit AMA that Lucas from Pine64 did. Now, this information was kind of already publicly available, but it wasn't mentioned in the community update, so this may answer, so this may answer a few questions you have. First, the PinePhone Pro already has hardware acceleration thanks to Panfrost's drivers, while the original PinePhone, that's still kind of work in progress, technically it works, it's just distros aren't shipping Lima yet, which is needed. Second, just like the original PinePhone, the PinePhone Pro is designed with repairability in mind, and you can easily disassemble it and purchase replacement parts in the Pine Store. Third, the PinePhone Pro does not come with a fingerprint reader or anything out of the box, however there will be an add-on back case if you want a fingerprint reader. Four, the GPU is powerful enough to handle Dreamcast games, N64 games, and run the game Open Arena, which is a Quake clone. And 5, unfortunately there are no plans for 5G support, which 
I think is fine now, but 4G will be shut off eventually, so hopefully they have 5G support by then through an update or an upgrade to the hardware. Although, I'm gonna be honest, if they don't have a 5G compatible Pine phone before 4G gets shut down, that would baffle me. So yeah. Next, we got a blog post from one of the developers that talks a little bit more about the technological stuff behind the PinePhone Pro. First, there are currently a couple hardware issues with the dev units. Now, these should be fixed by the time the Explorer edition comes out, because these are dev units after all. Another thing is software issues on the current PinePhone Pro do make their way to the PinePhone Pro, including issues like resuming from suspend, and there are some other software issues currently, but these are dev units, so it's impressive that they aren't many, many more software issues. The last thing of note is the SoC's power consumption is going to be higher than the original PinePhone, but the CPU will be faster than both the original PinePhone and the Librem 5. Next up, we got a boatload of information thanks to post-market OS developer and professional Rainbow Six Siege player, Martin Bram. Go watch his video, by the way. It is by far the best video on the PinePhone Pro, and it's honestly far better than this video. So after this video, go watch his. And here are some quick notes that I wrote down from his video. Again, go watch the full thing, but here's just some extra information I got from that video. Let's first start with the fact that the USB board is slightly different, which means it will support USB 3 and not USB 2, so that's good. The phone will support 5 GHz Wi-Fi, which is one of my main complaints with the original Pine phone is the fact that downloading stuff is very slow because of not having 5 GHz Wi-Fi. And it is very smooth. He shows off Plasma Mobile in this video, and it's amazingly smooth. And I always avoided Plasma Mobile because of its choppiness, but this might make me give it another shot because it's a lot more smooth on the PinePhone Pro. And apps launch a lot faster, thanks to not only having a faster CPU, but also a faster eMMC. Memory bandwidth has been upgraded thanks to the SoC, which is good. And web browsing on both Angelfish and Firefox is very, very smooth. Now, he also did a video of Bosch running on the PinePhone Pro, and it's not really that detailed. It basically runs the same as the normal PinePhone, just faster, and there aren't really any real issues or anything. It is very smooth, but not really anything to note, so yeah. Lastly, the PinePhone Pro has some Unix bench scores on the Postmarket OS wiki. Now, take these with a fat grain of salt because not all of these phones have perfect mainline support on Postmarket OS, and the PinePhone Pro is still in development, but we do have some numbers to compare it to some other phones, which is why I'm showing off these benchmark scores. The current closest phone that benchmarks to the PinePhone Pro is the Sony Xperia Z5, which is a 2015 flagship phone. This means that the PinePhone Pro should be able to match the speed of something like a Nexus 6P, because that's also a 2015 flagship and has the same SoC as the Xperia Z5, and it should be able to perform slightly faster than an iPhone 6, because the Xperia Z5 beats the iPhone 6 in benchmarks. But the PinePhone Pro still technically beats the Z5, not by much, but it still does. And that's not bad considering this is a mid-range phone that can run mainline Linux. Some other things I'd like to mention is that the PinePhone Pro is about 16% slower than the PinePhone Pro on Unix Bench. However, it is 75% faster than the original PinePhone. And I decided to test my Librem 5 using the Unix Bench suite. And the PinePhone Pro is about 69% faster than the Librem 5. Nice. Again, do take this with a fat grain of salt, as these benchmarks are a bit weird. For example, the original PinePhone somehow outperforming the Nexus 5X, and the Librem 5 is only like 60 points above the PinePhone on the score, even though in theory, it should be a bit more powerful. But these are the earliest benchmarks we have available to compare devices until more benchmarks do come out. In conclusion, that was all the information I could dig up on the PinePhone Pro. And hopefully you learned something in this video, and I cannot wait to get my grubby hands on a PinePhone Pro. Also, I'd like to apologize to Peerism. <laughs> Anyways, thanks to patrons Brandon Hopkins, Frank, John Sass, Jim Peter, Mario Scripsguard, Sam Puppet, and Mitchell Vantino for the support, and this video is over.